Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs and today we are making this adorable Queen of Hearts attachment. It does require a little bit of sewing on the body, but the hat and the little extra heart that we have added to match into your wreaths are no sew. So grab your glue guns and let's get going. Guys, we are back and we're going to get started. Just get everything set up here properly. Alrighty, so today we are going to make this adorable set. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time, a little bit of work. You can do this in pieces if you don't wanna do the whole thing at once, but it does require a lot of supplies. This is a big attachment. So, um, you know, hopefully you've, I have this entire <laughs> little box filled with things that we'll need. So I'm gonna set these guys over here. Now, a lot of you may not make Valentine wreaths. I know historically they're not the most popular, but a lot of people like to buy the attachments. So, um, you know, never hesitate to sell an attachment to somebody because that also is revenue for your business. Now, I'm using a satin material instead of a cotton. Um, it's very, it's so much harder to work with, but, you know, I like the look of it, especially on the boots. Um, it's $5.99 at Hobby Lobby. You can get every single color you want and um, obviously go when it's 30% off, so you get it. But I have black and red satin that I'm going to use. I have this checkered fabric, also Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can get it elsewhere. I'm sure Joann's has something similar. You can use the black and white Harlequin if that's what you want. But um, for this particular one, I thought the checkers would be fun just because... I had some of this fabric upstairs. You know me guys, I'm always going to try to use what I have so I don't have to run out and buy things. Now we're gonna start out with our sewn items and of course I've prepped everything just to make it go a little bit faster for you because there's a lot in tool. We have stacks of tool. You guys know how I feel about tool, not my favorite. We have all the pieces of foam cut out and the little foam board. This is the foam board. Like this is the soft foam foam sheets I call these and this is foam board so when you're purchasing and you're looking at the supply list and you need to go buy the things the heart needs to be on a board because if you try to do it on this it's going to curl it's not going to look I mean you probably could do it I'm not saying you can't but it's not going to be firm okay and then we just have feather boas and trims and more fabric and little um, heart rhinestones that I got from Hobby Lobby. Everything here can be purchased at Hobby Lobby. But remember, I mean, Hobby Lobby is not the best prices. So, um, you know, look around and see. If you want to wait closer to Valentine's Day, Dollar Tree always has a huge Valentine's Day selection. So it may be beneficial to you to hold off and wait till you can go to Dollar Tree. It's up to you. But we are going to go ahead and start sewing this. You want to take this and you want to set it down. Um, I'm opening up the boot like this to the ankle or wherever that is. I'm going to face it downward just like that. It takes some practice. Now, guys, I didn't just, you know, automatically start sewing everything perfectly. I have sewn things and had to rip them apart many times. Um, but the final outcome, when this is all said and done, when you flip this right side out, what you're gonna have is the shiny outside, you're gonna have the printed outside, and then your seam is going to be on the inside when you flip it around. So you kind of have to think two steps ahead. But it's very important that you fold this down and get it out of the way, and then flip it over like that. Like I said, you can, you can sew these in two separate halves, but you have to make sure you line up every bit of this when you put them together. So it just, this to me, this saves that step. So we'll do it again on this one. Stay. I have my, I want my boot facing this direction, right? So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm going to open it up for the two layers, fold in the underside and place this there. And use pins. If you, before you start sewing, if you're not sure if you're doing it properly, take a pin, put a pin in it, and then pull it around. And what you'll get, what you'll see is the outside 
the outside, which is correct, and then your seam is on the back side. So that will be hidden when you flip it around. I know it sometimes this really complicates people, but when you make attachments and you sew like this, you have to be able to visualize what you're doing as you're sewing it and how you want it to turn out. Otherwise you just, you know, I mean, listen, I have pulled things apart that didn't turn out quite how I thought they would turn out. So don't, don't be afraid of that. Just, uh, you know, that's what a seam rippers are for. So now I'm just very quickly going to put a little stitch on these again, making sure that the underside one is not in the way. You don't want to accidentally catch it in this seam. Just line them up. Okay, so I have them both sewn on. So now when I open this up and I fold the top part back, again, right side, right side, underside is the seam. Okay, that will, when we're done, all said and done, we're going to flip it around and that's all you're going to see is this right here. You're not going to see this seam back here. Okay, so now we do the exact same thing with the other side. Pull it out like this. Same thing, we have both the ends. And then we're just going to take the other piece of unsewn top of the boot, line it up on there. Line it up so it's nice and flat. Make sure nothing else is in the way. And you're going to sew these. And you want to give yourself, on satin, you definitely want to give yourself a solid quarter inch um, seam because it will, it definitely frays. Satin is one of the hardest fabrics to work with. You don't have to use satin, you can use cotton, but I just particularly, we have the satin and I like the way it looked. So now I'm taking the piece that hasn't been sewn yet, I'm lining it up with the other leg. So now when I unfold it, you basically have, I'm just going to show you this one leg, you have both sides of the boots sewn. Your seams are visible right here. Your seam is visible right here. Everything is lined up. The boots haven't moved at all. So when you sew the boot, it's going to be in place. You're not having to move them together. Same with the body. You have pins in place to hold it where you want it. So we are going to sew this now inside out. And then when we flip it around, these seams that you see right here will not be visible. They will be on the inside, okay? So now we're just going to sew the entire thing with a straight stitch all the way around. white thread on this black um, because I want you to be able to see um, the lines and all. Um, you can most definitely use black thread. The black thread up in here would be fine. Um, I typically would not use white thread on the black satin. We're just doing it for so I can show you. Um, I can actually show you what we've sewn so far. See how I have a really good at least a quarter of an inch um, seam right there. Um, I forgot what you call that, but you know, you, you definitely don't want to sew on the very edge of of satin. Satin will, will fray like crazy, like right here. I can already tell there's a little tiny notch in the satin, so I'm going to have to go back and reinforce this because it's not torn yet. But as I flip it around and start stitching it, um, I will more than likely get a hole right there. So I'm just going to stop it right there. And the reason is when I cut this out, I cut a little notch right there, um, just by accident. It wasn't on, it wasn't intentional. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix my mistake right now while I see it. So I'm gonna go around here again. I'm gonna double stitch this, this toe. I'm just gonna keep going now. Cause I fixed the little, I fixed the little problem area. So now I'm just gonna keep going. Um, if ever you see, you don't need to take it apart sometimes. All you need to do is throw a reinforcing stitch on it. 
Okay, and so these were lined up perfectly because I cut them out together. So there shouldn't be any problem with them sliding and um, mismatching. And just go slow on the satin. You really want to use your hand to hold it just to reinforce that the satin is very slippery. So you just want to, with felt, you don't even have to do this, but with satin, you definitely want to. And some cottons too. Cottons can be a little bit slippery as well, depending on what you're sewing. And if you are not a sewer, that is totally fine. You can make the heart and the top hat for this pattern. And it's just as stinking cute because um, people love the top hats. The top hats are, um, you can sell those by themselves. You don't have to have um, the bottom, the legs, if you don't, if you choose not to. Okay, so I'm just going around and I'm going slowly. I'm not in any kind of hurry. This top part up here is a cotton fabric. So much, much easier to work with in the satin. But once I get down here to the boot, then I'm going to start holding it and, you know, babying it just a little bit. And again, if you see any little spot where maybe you got a little too close to the edge, just stop sewing right there. Go fix the little spot and then you don't have to worry about it later and you won't have to worry about forgetting about it because <laughs> the last thing you want is to flip this right side out and find a hole because then you have to flip it back and re-sew it anyway so i'm keeping i've always got my fingers on the satin i don't want it slipping around which is why i place and you guys shouldn't it's why I place my needles in the center of it, not on the edges, because I, I want it to stay where it's at. As you're pulling out edge needles, um, it can start slipping on you if it doesn't have a good. So my needles are always in the center on this. That way I don't have to sit and pull out needles as I go. Pins, excuse me. So but by placing needles on the inside, I can easily go around without having to stop and pull out a pin, stop, pull out a pin, stop, pull out a pin. It's uh, it's just the way I do it. Um, you may be more comfortable with pinning it all the way around and that's perfectly fine. All right, so now go back and take out all the pins. Okay, so I've taken the pins out. And you guys know I like to go back and I look at all of my seams. I just, before I start flipping things around, I'm always going to at least give them a good glance over just to make sure there isn't a, they're right there, could be a little bit of an issue because it's a little closer. I don't know if you can see, I have a little notch right there. It's not a straight line. I don't know if that's going to cause an issue when I stuff it right here, but you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and throw a nice, another stitch on it. It's, it's so, 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 so much easier. And it's not going to affect the look of your attachment whatsoever. But you can see my white line, you know, I've got a really nice um, seam around it. This one up here. This is the one I fixed earlier. Now it looks horrible on here, but when you flip this around, nobody's going to see that. So, I mean, it looks really bad, but it's okay. So now we're gonna flip it. If I can get the fabric to open. I just use my fingers. If the legs are wide enough, you can get your fingers in here and then just um, pull it around like this. No big deal. And then you're going to want a dowel or something to get into the toe area. You want some type of stick or dowel, but I don't have sitting here, just so that you can put the stick in here, kind of push out the toe lightly. You don't need to, don't jam it in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So I'm just, this doll is just a little too big. It's not getting into the corner. So I have a smaller gauge one. And guys, um, if you don't know yet, these little dowels, you can buy anywhere. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at a Walmart. Um, some of the bigger ones, you can just cut them down so that you have two or three. But I always keep, this is like a, probably an eighth of an inch. And the other bigger one I use is a quarter of an inch or half an inch even. Um, but you could also, of course, use things like chopsticks and things like that. So, um, but these dowels are inexpensive and obviously I use them with every single, <laughs> every single item I make at some point, I have to use some, some type of, um, dowel to pull, push all the fabric through. Okay. And, then, and this is the point that if, if you didn't go back and fix places that you thought might make a little error, this is the part where you'll see the little holes and then you'll realize, oh darn. And you'll have to go and flip it back around and sew it again. So take the extra minute to just and with all of your sewing, you should do that. Just take that extra minute to make sure your seams look good before you go through all this effort of flipping it around and then finding a hole. Um, you guys, I've sold, I think we counted roughly 20 to 30,000 attachments over the years. And, you know, yes, I've had mistakes. And yes, I've had things that I should have gone back and fixed. And yes, I flipped it around, started stuffing and found a hole in it. It happens, but don't let that deter you. Just pull out the stuffing, flip it around, re-sew it. I mean, it's a little frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. And your project will turn out just fine. Even if you have to um, rip it open, you can re-sew it. You just re-sew it a little bit inside your other line and no one will ever know. Okay, so we have them all stuffed and it does take quite a bit of polyfill to get these to be stuffed this way, but you can see how cute they look. Little boots are just so much fun. I love them. All right, so now you're going to want to um, sew your tabs and you guys, you can use any scrap of felt. I mean, obviously you want to kind of choose red, white, or black, but it doesn't really have to be anything um, that you're using. And we're just going to fold the piece in half. What I like to do is stuff your polyfill in, grab your sides, use your fingers at the sides and just kind of fold it in a little bit so that you have a nice uh, seam at the top. Like if you just pulled it, get rid of the polyfill, if you just pulled it you can see that the seam at the top is there's loops of thread. It's, it's just not pretty. So by putting your fingers on the seams and then holding them under and then pulling it, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you just have to hold it with your fingers, put a, one of your tabs in there like this to where you folded it and put a pin in it to hold it for you. Like that and then Grab the other and just keep your keep your folded in seam. Oops, two pins. Go like that. And then on this last one, sorry, I have a pin in my mouth. You're just gonna place that one in there kind of evenly. Keep pulling it straight across like that. And that just helps give you kind of a just, if there's not a bunch, there's this one thread that I'm going to snip off, but it, it just looks nice. It's, it's not all jaggedy up here. Is it really important? No, because you're going to put some trim and stuff over that and the skirt's going to go over it, but I just like to make it look nice. On the back side, they'll see that you took the extra time to put a little seam in there. And we're just sewing straight across our little tabs. Flip it over, make sure there aren't any areas that accidentally got left. 
So now you can see we've sewn our tabs in, they're strong. Now at this point, if you wanted these legs to be posable, like say, I don't know, for some reason you wanted them to be posable, what you could do, take something sharp, poke a hole right here, run the wire all the way down into the leg, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of the foot, somewhere where it's not going to poke through the sides, hopefully. And then what you would do is just cut the wire there, place a dab of hot glue in the little hole that you made. And that way, when your customer receives it, there will be a piece of wire in it and they can bend the leg, you know. It's not foolproof. If they bend it too much, it could pop through down here. Um, but really, that's the easiest way to make them posable if you want them to be. And that'll be. Just tell my little toe isn't 100% popped out there. All right. Doesn't look bad. It's far enough. Okay. So we have the legs sewn. Now we're going to sew our cute little skirt which is just some pieces of satin sewn together. Your part of the hat. And they're all the same size. Um, honestly, the skirt, if you want it longer, make it longer. If you want it shorter, make it shorter. So all the face pieces upright. Um, obviously, satin has a, a shiny side and a dull side. So we're just going to sew these together like this. And then we're going to go back and we're going to scrunch it up at the top to make it smaller. Okay. Now, if you have a serger that does the scrunching for you, then have at it. But I do not. Or I do, but I'm not getting it out right now. So place a red piece on top of the black piece. Um, good sides together. Shiny sides together. And we're just going to go right up the seam. The one side. I said, you're going to scrunch all this together so you don't have to be super precise. So like you can see where I cut it, obviously they don't match up. Okay, satin is hard to cut. It's slippery. So now you have that piece on there. Take your other red piece. You want the black to be in the center so it kind of resembles the hat with the black strip down the front. Okay, and you're just going to sew this one on. So what you have is this large piece like that, okay? So you don't necessarily want the fullness, I don't know, you probably need a heck of a lot more tool to um, get this to be really, really, really full. So if you want it super full, then you're going to need to cut double or triple the amount that I have listed on the supply list. So let's see, I'm just going to, I'm just bunching this up at the top like that. Sticking it in here. No real rhyme or reason, just that I think it might look better. We'll see how it looks when it's done. <laughs> so there. Whoops. All right. You don't really care. This is all going to be scrunched up here. So you don't really care where it's at on the top. We're going to scrunch it down. So. Don't, don't worry about where your placement of this at the top up here. Okay, so I just decided instead of folding it in half, I'm going to scrunch them. Why not? Let's give it a shot. See what happens. I mean, it can't be any worse than the one I made yesterday, so uh, it won't look bad. Okay, so now I have all this tool just kind of scrunched up on there. And you could always go back and trim it, so don't worry if it's hanging over. But now I'm going to flip it over. To this side that way I'm, the tool is out of the way i don't want this tool catching on my needle um or my sewing machine foot here it's going to catch it's going to snag it's going to be a may a pain so i'm putting the satin on top and i'm i'm going to fold over this little edge of the satin right here and we're going to glue this side down so none of these rough edges i don't want to sew it because i don't want a big seam on the side or a big thread unless you have a really nice red that matches i'm just going to glue it but we'll glue it afterwards so i'm using my foot to hold it for me well now it just cut which i don't know why and we're going to just do a lock stitch a front and a back and then i'm going to pull out a pin now all i'm doing is squishing it up under as I go, I just I go a couple inches, remove a pin, kind of squish it 
up under to scrunch it up up here. Now we're going to cover this with a piece of trim. It doesn't have to be pretty. You just want to make sure it's about the same width as the waist of your um, body. So I'm just removing pins and kind of scrunching it in there, going very slow. Um, you know, you can't really get your finger caught in here unless you stick it under the foot, which I don't know why you would do that. But, you know, if you just go slow enough and scrunch it, it should be no problem. So I'm scrunching and I'm getting to the very end here and I'm going to fold over this little um, end here that way. There. So you can see it's just kind of kind of scrunched, not super, super scrunch, but you want it to be the width, approximately the width of your body. And I think this will work perfectly. The only thing that the red ends are going to fold over the edges right there. So that'll work just fine. Just like that. So if you make it a little bit big, you can always go back, do a snip and a snip, pull them out and re-scrunch them. But I didn't, you can tell, I didn't scrunch a lot. I just made it, um, it's just one of those things. Like I said, I did one yesterday, so I kind of knew what, how much to scrunch. I mean, it might be something you guys may not like it the way you first do it. Um, but again, you're doing a straight stitch. So snip, snip, pull it out. No problem. Go back and re-sew it because you're going to cover it. Remember, you're covering it with trim or a waistband or whatever you want to use. So don't be afraid to uh, undo what you did. So I'm not going to, um, maybe I will. Let's see. The tool is sticking out under the bottom down here. So a bigger pair of scissors. There, so. so where it's super, super uneven, I'm just going... I'm just laying it flat, holding it down, and just giving a little snip where it's really sticking out, like, noticeably. You kind of want your tool to line up with your red or in black satin. This side is super long. Okay, so then you can, you can even lift this up if you wanted to. And just make sure everything is nice and even. I'm sure you've all seen a tool skirt before. They usually have a very blunt edge on them. Uh, not that that really, really matters. I'm thinking like ballerina type skirt. But uh, we just want this to poof out. Okay. So now, like I said, I had folded over this top edge right here. And I'm just going to put some glue down here. Just to fold over this rough edge and I didn't sew it because I didn't want a seam in it. I just felt like a seam right there without, you know, red thread or something. It just didn't, it wouldn't have looked nice. So, and you kind of want the weight of the hot glue to hold the sides down for you. So you can see now, oops, just, and then we're going to put trim at the bottom down here so you don't have to worry about the bottom, but, uh, on the sides, I didn't want rough edges on the sides. So, you know, it's a little hard to work with this stuff. You gotta be patient with it, go slowly, and then just fold the seam over. Nothing too complicated. I'm just wanting to hide all those little rough frillies that you get from the satin. The satin, um, it frays very easily, so. Folding it over, just a little bit of glue. That way when you look at it, it's just got a fold. Nobody will know that that's even hot glued, okay? So now, let's see what we have in our bag of tricks here. So guys, this heart ribbon that I'm using right here, it is a Hobby Lobby ribbon, but it's from Valentine's Day last year. You can't get it right now until Valentine's comes out, I'm sorry. But it's what I wanted to use. Um, if you want to make this now, you can find other gold. Any gold um, trim will work. You don't have to have this trim at all. But it's just what I had, so I wanted to use it. Unfortunately, I'm having to teach you guys how to do this stuff before the stuff's in the store. And it's. I know it can be very frustrating, but I don't know what else to do. 
<laughs> I don't want to give you, I don't want you to put Christmas, you know, themed trim on this. I want it to be just a gold trim, which you can find at Hobby Lobby, hopefully. Um, just something that is just gold. It can be any gold trim. Wait till they're 50% off, just like the ribbons and all that, and go to this, you know, find something gold and red and black, whatever you like. They have lots of different types of trims that you can use, so um, that are not in the Christmas section. And then as we get closer to Valentine Day, obviously you can start picking up some, uh, you know, more Valentine's things. But for right now, unfortunately, it's about all I can give you at the moment. I hate that, but really. But you can see now. Step that off. You can see, I just like the way the hearts look down there. Um, you can, well, I, I wouldn't do it on this, but you can cut out little hearts too if you wanted to. Okay. Well, let's. I can always go back, like this little piece of tool is going to drive me crazy. So it's just one little section that keeps popping out. Let's give it a snip. Okay, so we have this big, bulky, full <laughs> wreath, you know, skirt. I, I mean, it's cute and all, but... So now I'm just cutting three of these little hearts off of here just to use on this skirt. Just to break up some of this black right here. You don't have to do this. You can use rhinestones or you can buy a piece of gold foam, gold glittered foam and cut them out. Um, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so we have just three cute little hearts there that match the hearts at the bottom. And there are little places, like there's some feather boa stuck in here. There's there's little places I'm gonna wanna clean up down along the bottom where it's frayed just a little bit. Go in and just snip off the little areas that are frayed. You can do this before you put the trim on too, and that'll save you. <laughs> I just pulled all of that out. Oof, that was bad. When it's fraying really bad like that, just throw, throw some hot glue on the back. Just like that. Is that cool? Okay, so let's see what else do I have here. I don't know if I brought enough to do the waistband with. Now the waistband on the pattern is just a rectangle. It's just a rectangle of felt or fabric that you can put across here. Or if you're buying trim like this, you can just put a piece of this trim. Um, it doesn't matter. All you want to do is hide that seam. It's it's not, uh, you can use whatever you have, whatever you want. This part essentially of this is going to be stuffed up in the deco mesh on a wreath. People aren't even gonna see it. So really you probably don't even have to cover it. It's just something I've always done. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this to the top of this. Just like this, okay. And it's gonna require you to kind of push down on it to hold it close to the body because we scrunched it and it's going to want to bow up. So I'm just holding it, giving it a chance to grab on there, flip it over. And on these little ends, I'm just, I'm just going to pinch it around the corner. That's it. Don't use a lot of glue. Don't burn yourself. I'm just going to glue to the end of the red satin and just kind of fold it around. Now, if you don't have enough, if you scrunched it and you don't have this little fold over, it's okay too. But because I did have a little bit extra, I'm just going to fold it over and hold it. Now we're going to hold the whole thing because it's not wanting to cool off here. There we go. See, and the weight of the hot glue on this will kind of pull this section down because of the weight. Same way the, the trim up here is gonna pull this down for you. All right, so flip it over again, I'll pull it down. And I hope I brought enough of this, I am not sure. I'm just gonna take um, one line of glue, doesn't need a lot, take a piece of this trim. And I'm just hiding that sewn seam, that's it. I'm not doing anything, I, I mean, this isn't really serving a purpose other than hiding our sewn bunching up there. And I'll just trim it off, flip it over, 
take the very end, just curl it over with the red part that we curled over. Of course, my glue stick has to run out on me. Uh oh, we're stuck. And then just this little end that's hanging over, again, just fold it over the side along with the red fabric so you kind of have the edges hidden. Now it is, you know, it's not beautiful in the back, but you know, in the front, get rid of the glue strings. It just has, it just gives it that little bit of a waistband. Now you can use a thicker ribbon. You can use whatever you want. I'm literally just using this half inch trim, but if you want on the pattern, it is, it's a big rectangle of like you could fold it in half. You can make it thicker. You can make it bigger. It's totally up to you. Or you can just use a piece of trim like this. Okay. So we have that part done. I don't, I can't, it's hard to tell me to show you, but when it sits in the wreath, it's really going to look, these little sides are going to kind of flare out and it's going to have a little poofiness from the tool underneath. So just enough, not a lot, just enough. I don't really want to put too much on there. Okay, so we're gonna get our little pieces of, we're gonna put feather boa around the ankles and we are going to put, now you can just glue the heart rhinestones right onto this if you want to, totally up to you. They don't look, oops, especially the red ones, they look cute on there. Like you can see them pretty good. I like to do this little, you know, like if the front of a boot kind of thing. And you just stick it on there and fold it around Oops. like that. And we'll hot glue all that down. And basically it'd be like where your laces are, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna put glue in the center so I can run it right up where the seam is. So I don't have glue on the edges, just in the center. I turn my boot towards me and I'm gonna center it right there on the boot. And then these two sides will fold over and glue. Fold them over. Now we're gonna put trim around this so you don't have to glue it too much. The trim will hold it down. So I'm putting glue on the back of the white piece and then just fold. <laughs> Jeez, the glue stick, the glue strings. I'm this, these glue sticks are the absolute worst. I will never, I think every time I do a tutorial, I complain about these stupid glue sticks. They're awful. They are awful. I will never spend money on these again. I don't care how big of a clearance they are. So again, just gluing it to the center oops, so that I know it's centered. And then I will take my glue gun and put some glue on the back of the white piece of felt. This is felt that I'm using, but you can use cotton. You can use whatever you want. It's just the front of the boot. Cotton might look a little better because it's not as thick as the felt, but really, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference in the outcome. So this trim, guys, I buy this, it's an Expo trim. I don't know if they have this at Hobby Lobby. It's just a red with a gold braid in it. I get this off Amazon in like the 20 to 25 yard bolts. I don't think you need that much. So I didn't want to give you guys the link to that. You can use any red sequiny style trim that you want. Don't think that you have to order, you know, a $30 bolt of trim to do one little project. Find something that you really like that you can go and red sequin, just regular red sequin is fine too. You don't have to have the gold in it. The gold is simply, be I just like it. I mean, and I had it. So, you know, I'm gonna use what I have. Um, but now if you think you're gonna make a bunch of these and you wanna sell a few, it might be worth it to you to go on Amazon. It's my Expo, E-X-P-O International is a great um, trim company. Okay, so now I'm gonna take, <laughs> I have glue strings, um, these little hearts. Now you can put them right at the center, which I probably will do, or you can do two lines of them. It just depends on how many hearts you have and how many you want to put. Well, that didn't work. Okay, hold on. We have to let that one cool off because the glue strings. I feel like I'm stuck in a spider web right now. Everything I touch is sticking. So let me clean off my nail. Let's try this again. And this time I'm just going to put glue directly on this and then 
the, the little rhinestone won't stick to me so badly. I guess the glue strings make life hard sometimes, I'm telling you. Now, AdTech, the brand that is mostly sold, you know, at Walmart, AdTech, they have a premium glue, glue, glue stick, that literally says on the package, 80% less glue strings. 80%. And I will tell you, it's a good glue. It does still have some glue strings, but if I had to compare it to this glue stick that I'm using here, oh my God, 100%, 100% better as far as glue strings go. And glue strings, they can, uh, now when you're doing a big thing like a wreath, you probably, you know, you grab a couple of strings, no big deal. But when you're doing intricate things and it's sticking to every end of your fingertip and you're sticking to everything, it gets a little frustrating. A little bit frustrating. So we're just going to dab these little cute little hearts on there. And you can decorate this however you want. If you want to put trim across and kind of make a, like a, sh not a shoestring, but you know, like a boot ties across, you can do that. Or you can just throw these like I'm doing here. It, have at it. Have some fun with it. Um, when you go to the store and buy trims, just when, especially when they're half off, Buy four or five. Don't just buy one, you know. Buy some that you can play with and have some fun with. See how those little boots, see how cute they look, the little hearts on them. From the sides, you can't see it quite as much, but, you know, when people are looking at your wreath, they're looking at all sides. So then we want to put our feather boa, and the feather boa, to be honest, 100% just to hide that seam right there. I mean, it looks cute too, but for me, a feather boa, it hides everything behind it. And it just uh, kind of makes it look finished. I don't know. I love any kind of trims and any kind of things that hide all the little, because you can't, you can't erase seams. Seams are going to be there. So use the tricks and use feather boas and use trims and use all the good things to hide all the seams. And if you wanted to back here, say you put your trim across the front and you didn't like the way the back looked, well, don't cut it. Just put a piece in the back like that. And then you literally can't see any, any of your workings back here, any of the, the rough edges back here from the tool and all that. Just put, you can just do the thing all the way around and glue it all the way around. Totally up to you. All right. So we are done with our little legs, our little boots. Super, super cute. I love this. Um, also, if you want the legs to go forward, Again, piece of wire, you're gonna to have to, you know, finagle them to make them go forward, but most wreaths have them going sideways like that. Um, it's just easier that way to sew it and all. And here's our little skirt. And she's big, she is uh, 20, 20 inches long. So she's, she's a big skirt. So, I mean, for me, this is a premium attachment. This is an attachment that I would charge $50 for with the hat and everything else. At $50 would be actually be a deal. That would be a steal. I would go higher, um, just depending on what you put into it, but minimum $50 for this big attachment like this. Let's find the pieces. Now, these are the. this is the foam. This is the two millimeter foam sheet. It's flimsy, it's not the greatest, but you know, I've never had one, other than shipping, I've never really had one had a, have an issue inside of a wreath. Okay, so our piece is bigger than our foam. For a reason. So we want at least one side, doesn't have to be both sides, just one side needs an overhang. And the reason we do an overhang is so that we can glue it down and have a nice flat seam back here, guys. So do not cut all the way to the edges on one side. It doesn't matter which side, but one side needs to be longer. So, so this one, we're just gonna flip this up. Now, this is a cotton fabric, so if you put big globs of glue like this, you're gonna be able to feel those big globs of glue. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So I tend to just stay around the edges. That's not gonna work. Um, I stay around the edges and use the tip of your glue gun to smear it out for you. You wanna, you wanna flatten it as much as possible. And then I just pull, I take my fabric and I make sure there's no gaps and no wrinkles and I want to pull it all the way to the edges. And flip it up there. 
and use use the tip of your glue gun and really don't you don't want big um, balls of hot glue. I'm just doing the top and the bottom. I'm not doing in the center. And then just use your hand to smooth it, get all the wrinkles out of it, and make sure it's good and pulled. You want it pulled very tight. You don't want there to be wrinkles on here. Take this, and then we'll glue it all the way to the end. Smearing those blobs of glue as I go. I'm going to take this smear. All right, now this is the this is the standard eight inch top hat. Well, this is probably more of a seven and a half inch, but it's close um, that we make. So you can use this top hat throughout the year for anything. You can use it for Mad Hatters. You can use it for Uncle Sam's. You can use it. Um, it is the tapered V-shape hat. It is not, the, well, actually, it's not the Uncle Sam hat. That's probably not, well, not the one you want to use, but um, we will be doing an Uncle Sam later in the year with the stovepipe top hat, so... That will be another one that we'll do. Same thing, um, you know, eight inch is a good size for a wreath. You go much bigger than that, it's a lot. So I'm trimming all of the excess around all three sides, but I am not trimming that fourth side. And it can be a little difficult. Okay. All right, so I'm leaving this here because this is what we want to glue down after we've folded it over. It just makes a nice seam. So I'm going to let that cool for a minute. I don't want to mess with it too much. All right, next piece. This is our brim. Now, I don't know what this is. Oh, that's for the heart. Okay, so I opted, you can use any fabric you want for the brim. Now the top, this is the piece for the top. The top really needs to be the same fabric you're using on the sides. It doesn't have to be I just think it looks better. When you have a different color top, it it draws your eyes up there. It makes things not look um, finished. But now the brim, you can put, I'm just using the scrap satin. See, and this has like a seam in the middle of it. Um, you can kind of see it on there. It's okay, because it's, it's just the brim. It's not gonna be a big deal. So we do this um, a little bit by little bit, excuse me. I had to put my thoughts together, okay. So what I'm going to do on this one, okay, so I should, I should explain to you also, this end piece here is going to be folded over and glued like that. And that is to cover this back piece right here, okay? Um, it just looks neater when that is covered. And it saves you from having to add trim to the back. Who wants, I mean, you know, trim is expensive, so when you can cut a cost of, you know, eight inches of trim here, it makes a difference. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. Again, just smear your glue out. Use your fingernails. Make sure your satin side is showing. Um, I guess because it's the brim, it really wouldn't matter too much. Now this is sticking up a little further here, so I'm just gonna snip it off. And you can see, guys, my cuts are not perfectly straight. Because we're gonna be folding all this over and doing, all, I don't, you don't have to, look at this one. <laughs> it, it is so crooked, it's not even a circle. It's just wonky. It's okay though, it's a no big deal. So now, we're going to take this and we're just going to go all the way to the edges, all the way around, a little bit in the middle, just kind of ziggy zaggy, but use, use the tip of your gun, make sure you're smoothing it all out. And you're going to take this piece and just fold it over and then smooth it. And you will notice because this is satin, you're going to feel, as you do this, you're going to feel all those little glue lines and all that stuff okay there's really not much you can do satin is so thin you're gonna feel it um not a huge deal though okay so now this end we're not touching but the rest of this we're gonna trim you know almost to the very edge here we're gonna put trim over this we're gonna hide it guys if you haven't learned anything by watching all these videos so far is that i use trim to hide everything so <laughs> So it's okay if this is white. It's okay. You could use red, purple, green, black, whatever color you want. We're covering it, okay? You, you can see a little bit of white on there right now, but you're not going to once we place this trim over it. So if you have foam sheets already, if you have some five millimeter, then go ahead and use the color that you have. The color does not matter. Now this one, we're just gonna put it on here and we're gonna trim all the way around it. 
Now, if you wanted to use tacky spray, like a spray tacky spray on this, you absolutely can. Do not have to use hot glue. If you're okay with letting it dry for overnight or whatever, totally fine. You can use a glue stick, though I have learned that glue sticks are not very strong. They will peel, the fabric will peel up over time, especially on this foam. So I am not a huge, I do use the glue stick once in a while. But I don't know if you can see, if I hold it up here, you can kind of see the little squiggly lines in there from the glue gun. It's just part of it. You can put felt under this, do a felt layer, and then put this satin over it, and it will be perfectly flat if that's a big issue for you. I mean, don't, um, there are ways to, it just takes a little more work. And this is the top piece, which we are going to trim. So I'm just putting some squiggly lines on there, setting it on that, and then I'm gonna flip it over and pull it out really tight. There we go. So we're letting all this cool. All right, so we'll go back to our base piece, or um, you can see around the edges, it's a little crinkled because of the hot glue. And what the hot glue does is it actually melts this foam. So there's really no way around that. But you guys know I am not the type that's gonna glue something, let it sit overnight. I'm gonna, I want instant gratification. I put a line of glue on the outside of this one and now facing me, I'm just going to roll this onto the other piece. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I just, you can see, I just folded it onto this and then I hold it on the table with my hand and make sure it holds. And then I go back and this little flap, we're gonna have this little flap that we left. And I'm gonna take my little detail gun and get out the glue stick. I don't know how we've already gone through so many glue sticks here. I should pull out a handful. There we go. And I'm just going to go, I'm going to glue, very lightly glue just the inside of this little piece of fabric, this little flap of fabric. You don't need a lot on there because you don't want it. And then I'm going to flip it on and I'm going to hold it again. That way I don't burn myself. Now, if you have glue seeping out and it's stuck to the table, don't use, try not to use so much glue. That means you're just put way too much on. Okay, so now as you can see, it's a nice flat surface. There's really no lump. The edge of the foam is a half an inch over here, but we have this flap that makes it nice and flat. It just makes the back of your hat look finished. Um, not that anybody's gonna look at the back of a wreath, but when you're customers purchase your attachment, they do appreciate when things are made to look pretty from all sides. Not that, like I said, anybody's going to see it, but it's no big deal. That little, that little bit of extra glue on that flap, you know, is not going to add any cost to your project. Now I always, you know, I like to do the extra things to make things look really good but I always weigh the cost of it. If it's something that's gonna take me 20 minutes to do, then heck no. My time is, you know, valuable. If I have to sit and for 20 minutes try to make something look good, then I've just completely, you know, wasted my time. Um, if it's just something that's super quick, like a little flap and all I have to do is throw a little hot glue on it, then absolutely. And if that makes it look better, looks more finished, then of course I'll do that. Okay, so now we have satin on the sides. We still have this white edge showing. You could use black. Don't think you have to use white. It's just what I had again. And we have this little, little brim. But first we're gonna put this on. And this is going to be much bigger than this. That's on purpose. If I made this the exact same size as the top of this hat, you would spend 15 minutes trying to line up every single little edge on this and it would drive you insane, guys. Don't. Oh Lord, I learned that a long time ago. You make pieces bigger and you trim. Don't try to make things perfect because lining stuff up, especially on a craft that isn't like precise down to the millimeter. Oh my goodness, you will, you will not be happy. So see how much bigger this, this is. I mean, but I did that on purpose because now it's perfectly round. It's right in the center of that. All I'm going to do is wait for that glue to cool off and I'm going to trim it off and it, then it's perfect. Then it looks like it goes together. 
And while that is cooling, I'm going to put my trim on the edge of this. And I'm just gluing. Take your trim, whatever kind you want. And you can use red trim, white trim. If you have some really cute trims you can put on here, or I mean, just whatever, or um, cordage, like if you have a gold cord, cording. I know with Christmas, they had rolls of the gold rope. Um, that would look cute on here too. I'm just going, as I go, I'm just kind of holding it down. I want the whole trim to stick. Now this trim is just the slightest bit wider than this, but it's okay if it hangs over a little. See, I don't know if you can tell there, but it does have a little bit of an overhang, but really, I don't think that's really gonna make a difference. Um, you can try to find a quarter inch trim. This is a half an inch. You can try to find a quarter inch, but the great thing about a half an inch is if you don't get it on there perfectly, it's still gonna cover all this underneath. So, I mean, all right, I had something fall here. Just keep going with this all the way around. Just nice, I'm using, I'm using the nozzle of my glue gun to spread it out so I don't have big globs of glue. And we're gonna go all the way around here. Okay, and I just cut it off and the back is already covered because we covered that with the satin earlier. Now I didn't bring it in here with me, but this is where I would put holes back here to um, attach this to, um, you know, pipe cleaners and things. Um, you, can, you don't have to have a fancy hole puncher. You can just use scissors or an X-Acto knife. Uh oh, where did my pipe cleaners go? Uh, oh, shoot. Okay, we're gonna use white ones. That way you can still see them. P poke a little hole in there. Uh, you don't, it, I mean, you don't have to have a fancy hole puncher. Okay, that's what I'm getting at. You really don't. And um, the hole punch I use is a leather belt punch because it's a little bit thicker than um, some of the jewelry punches, but really, I just did it with a pair of scissors and it's doing the exact same thing. So don't think you have to go buy a $15, $20 leather hole punch unless you specifically need the holes, you know, to be certain sizes. But it's just a pipe cleaner. So those are, we're gonna use the, your customer is going to use those to attach that into their wreath or they, they can, it's an option. So now this is cooled off. I'm going to take my scissors. I'm gonna trim all of this off. I'll probably decorate this before I attach it to the brim. Just a little bit easier. Not always though, maybe not. Um, we don't have much decoration on this. And then what I like to do is I just go back and I make sure there aren't any big flaps that aren't glued down. Like right here is a kind of a big flap. I'll throw a little extra glue on there just to hold it down. And the reason for that is when you put the trim on here, sometimes it'll catch on these extra pieces of fabric that are flapping. And um, after it's being shipped and being handled and stuff, sometimes the little flap will come up a little right here. Here's another big one, right? Well, that's a really big one right there. You can see how that whole thing has come up. Just takes a second, throw a line of glue, and then push it down. Because when you're trimming, you can't always be sure exactly where your glue, um, unless you're using tacky glue where you can cover the entire surface, it's hard to know with the glue gun. So there, and I'm just, again, just through experience and doing this you know, often, that's why I go back and do that. All right, so now I go to the back, the back of the hat. And I want to make sure I get glue up here where the foam sheet is exposed and a little bit of glue below it because you want this trim to cover that foam sheet. So you want to make sure it's going all the way to the top of your hat. So just keep going with your tr trim. Use the little glue gun, use the nozzle to smear out the glue. Don't just put a big old hefty bead on there and then stick the trim on because it's gonna come out everywhere and you're gonna have a mess. Um, use, put a, put a small bead and then use, use the tip, especially in this detail gun, it's got a really long tip on it 
to smear the glue so that it doesn't come out in a big blob on the top or the bottom. Because there's once you have that, unless you want to stick your finger or a pair of scissors or something in it to smooth it down, it's just always going to be there. It's probably not going to look great. Okay, so we went all the way around it. Trim that off. And I always put a little bit of extra glue at the very end because I don't want this particular trim does unravel a little bit because it is uh, braided. So I just want to make sure the end is going to stay like that. And of course, after you're done, you always want to lint roll. When you lint roll your items, the glue, it'll pick up the glue strings. Okay, so now you take your brim which is the five millimeter foam. It's a little bit thicker. You can use foam board for this too, guys. If you want it, if you have foam board, this particular piece is, you know, you can use the foam board. You don't have to use foam, soft foam sheets. Um, so that's one less cost, you know. And then I'm gonna put glue all the way around this edge. We are gonna cover this, remember, we're covering this with a feather boa. So yeah, it's gonna look a little messy when you set this down. There's gonna be a little bit of glue bubbling out, but we are going to fix that. I'm just going to guess where the center is, just like that. You know, doesn't you don't want it all the way forward, you don't want it all the way back, you just kind of want to guesstimate where the center would be. All these glue strings and all this you can lint roll off later. Ah, drive me crazy. Okay, so we're going to want that cool. We don't want to mess with that while it's Cooling off. So I'm going to use the trims and things that I used before. That way this hat will tie in with the legs because it's going to be made of the same items. So we're going to trim these. It's easier to do it here than wait until it's on the hat itself. So I know I want two of those and then I know I want to put several of these little hearts on here. I think I had four, maybe five. So we're just going to cut all these apart. Again, you can make little hearts or buy it. You can just use rhinestones on here. And whenever I'm putting stuff like this on, I always start in the center. That way I know, do I want two up here? Or do I just want one more up here? One more down here. But at least one is centered. Um, really on everything I do, I, I like to start in the center. So actually, I don't think it's going to need two. It's just going to need one. One there. One down here. Okay, and I'm not going to glue these on until I put it onto the hat. So, fold that under. And the great thing about having a flat back is it holds your hat for you. So now, and it's basically, you're going to have the center. The center is going to be just right up top here. So you're going to be able to easily find it right into the center. So I'm going to put some glue. It does not take a lot. And remember, we're going to put trim around this. It's going to help hold it on. So just glob some glue on there. Kind of figure out your center, just like that. And then you're going to want to have to hold this on there just so that because it's curved, you want to curve it with your hands to make sure it's going to adhere to the fabric underneath it. It just takes a second. Okay, now I'm going to grab, you're going to glue, again, not big globs, just a nice steady line of glue. Place your trim that you cut, and then just tap it down. My, this, If I don't tap, this has holes in it because it's sequined, so the glue will come through, so I'm just tapping it. It's a little long, but we can always trim it. Take it and do the other side. Again, add a glue stick. I, <laughs> I'm so spoiled by my eight inch glue sticks. These four inch ones go really fast. Oh, goodness. Set it on there. Just pull it nice and straight. And 
then I just take my scissors and trim off this little edge that's sticking. Just like that. And that is the top hat. Oh, feather boa. Sorry, we're not done yet. You do not need a lot of glue to adhere a feather boa. So don't go crazy with the glue. One simple little line. Um, you know, feathers, they're not going anywhere. So, oh. Bush paints everywhere. And I have a little extra on this one, so I'm not going to cut it off. I'm just going to add a little more glue and overlap the back here. I mean, you can cut it off if you want to, but you don't have to. So there, there's our cute little hat. If you guys have picks and Valentine picks and things with cute little glittered hearts and little foam um, hearts, you can put those on here too. Um, it doesn't have to be this little. You can do bigger ones, bigger chunky ones if you want. Just kind of go through your stash and see what you have. All right, so our hat is done. Our body is done. So really quickly, we're just gonna do the heart. I mean, this little heart, I just did this for fun. I mean, you don't have to do this. It's really optional. If you don't feel like you want to spend the time to do this, then don't bother. Just find where my fabric is. There it is. All right. So you can see, again, I didn't cut this out perfectly, <laughs> but it's okay because it's getting folded over in the back. All right. So when you're doing a no-sew, you always want to start wherever there's a harsh turn or wherever there's something that needs to be pulled a little tighter put that on there I'm holding this with my hands so it doesn't slide and I'm just basically I want to get this turn this this V in here really tight before I do anything else because that's the top of the heart if it's not pulled nice and tight in there then it's not gonna look right I forgot a pipe cleaner so also, if you're going to attach this, go ahead and throw a pipe cleaner in. Like that. Now you have a pipe cleaner stuck in there. So go ahead and center it again and get it right where you want it. Make sure you have plenty of overhang on both sides. And then just start pulling it around. I pull it. You know, I, I, I tug on it pretty good. I want it to be nice and taut around these corners so that it definitely looks like a heart. But as I'm doing this hand is holding this so that these don't pull and you end up accidentally pulling all this way, then you don't have enough on this side. I use my hand to just kind of hold it down. This is gonna be stuffed with polyfill. So I don't need to leave the entire bottom open. I typically just need enough to get my hand through so I'm gonna go ahead and just close up this one side and this is gonna be our side that we'll stuff the polyfill with. Um, you can kind of do it any way you want it, but somewhere down here, you need to leave it open enough that you can get some polyfill in there. Okay. So now, and if your hand's not quite big enough, use your dowels, that's what, that's what we have. Or if you don't have a dowel, you can use a large glue stick on something like this that isn't very long, so you can just grab a glue stick and the glue stick will push it in just as easily. Use small little handfuls until you get it all the way around. You make sure you get all the way up into the little top of the heart. And use your hand to feel over it to see if you've missed a section or if there's a big gaping like valley where you can tell there's no polyfill in there, then you wanna Go ahead and fix that. Use your hands. Smooth it out. <laughs> the mailman must be here. The dogs are howling. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hi, buddy. So I have my chihuahua in here and he's howling too. So you're hearing all these funny noises. It's my crazy dogs. You guys know we have a house full of animals. <laughs> oh 
one is Charlie. Are you gonna howl? You're howling with the wolves, huh? Yeah. This cutie pie. <laughs> they always sound like they're dying. They crack me up. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> if I could mute them, I would. <laughs> but they're part of my life, so um, I try not to stress too much if they make noise in the background. That's just part of having animals, and I feel like you all pretty much agree. Doesn't take away from our little lesson here. It's kind of cute to listen to a chihuahua howl. <laughs> Charlie, you good? You good? And now I'm just trimming off the back. Now you can use a scrap piece of white felt, red felt, black, whatever you have if you want to cover this in the back. Or you can use another piece of this checkered fabric. It's a little thin. I prefer that my backings to be a felt because it'll um, hold in the pipe cleaners and all that a little better. But you can. If you have some scrap pieces that you can put back here just to cover all of this, then absolutely. And I'm making a kind of a mess of it, but that's okay. It's the back. All right, so I just used the same trim, this one. Now in your pattern, you had the pattern for the foam board, the pattern for the fabric to do around, and then I gave you a smaller little heart. It's just a little heart, and I don't, I don't think I brought it. Hold on. I'm just looking around to see if maybe I brought it. It might be over here. Hold on one second. Hi, Charlie. Are you howling at the big dogs, huh? Are you howling at the big dogs? Oh, big dog. Okay, here's the pattern. And guys, you guys know when I, I cut out the paper pattern that I print and then I put it on a poster board and then I put it in a folder, it says Queen of Hearts right here. So this is my pattern. So anytime I need this, I can go back and grab it. Let me see if I can dig out that little heart. Now this little heart is literally just to help you draw a line, this one, so that you can center it. If you, you don't have to do this either. This is totally optional. But when you do your heart, sometimes it's hard to make it perfect. So I just did this little heart for those of you who want to put this little heart in the center. Get a pen that run, writes here. And we're gonna cover this with trim, so it's okay that I'm drawing directly on it. But it'll be so much easier for me to follow these lines with this than it would be for me just to do it um, you know, by sight. And again, this kind of stuff is, you can make this as fancy or as not fancy as you want. So I'm putting glue directly on that line that I just drew. And I'm gonna tap it down. And we're gonna go up here. And at the corner, you just kind of twist it, make a turn. Go around, go around, and try to make it all line up. And that's just a guide. It's just simply a guide to help you make sure that your heart is even on both sides and centered. It's not easy to do without some type of guide. So that's what this little heart is for. And then, because, you know, you can't ever have enough feather boa, I want to put some red feather bow around this one just for fun. Um, might as well. Now I know Hobby Lobby has feather boas. They have big, bushy marabou boas that are just wonderful. Um, but they're expensive. Sometimes you get them on sale, but I believe they're six dollars a piece, and that is six feet. So you can make probably two of these. Uh, attachments with one of those every once in a while they go half price I don't it's kind of like the pipe cleaner and felt sheets and things like that they they don't go on sale every other week the same way other crafts do you, so when I'm in the store I always check those aisles and if I see something is half price that I would use in some type of craft on a regular basis then I grab three or four of them um, four usually because I do everything in even numbers but uh I just, um, it's not always on sale. 
You know, some things go on sale like florals, ribbons. They're on sale every other week. It's kind of, but crafts are not. You just kind of have to get there and look at the ad every week. Um, the ad will tell you when certain things go on sale. So, but you can find the marabou, bow, the feather bow is on sale. It's just not going to be every other week, guys. So as you're going to Hobby Lobby, just, you know, a Michaels has feather boas. You can get them on Amazon. You can buy a, from International, whatever it's called, International, you guys know what I'm talking about, the party supply kind of place. If you can wait for them, they have like a multi-pack that gives you kind of one of every color. I mean, that's up to you though. See, see how cute the hearts are. So there we go. Here is our cutesy little body with our little skirt. And once the, once the wreath maker gets it on their wreath and fluffs it all out and kind of, it's gonna look really cute. Those little back ends, you actually can, if you want to, you can put a little dab of glue right there on the back of the leg. It's totally, to make the skirt look more like that. You can see it. Or you can just leave it so that it kind of flares out. Or you can do a skirt all the way around. You can cut six of these panels if that's what you want to do. I don't see a reason to do the back, but you know, totally up to you. We have a cute little hat that is, you know, has the same basic theme, has the hearts and the black down the center, and then just a little accent heart. So anyway, that is it, guys. I hope you enjoy this. I cannot wait to see your creations. Um, again, almost 90% of these supplies are gotten at Hobby Lobby. So, you know, it just depends on how much you want to spend and how much you want to put into it. Um, you can easily find these supplies anywhere. You can look for fabrics at Joann's. You can look um, at Michael's and places like that to see if you can get a better deal and see when things are on sale. So um, ultimately, this is probably going to cost you probably close to $10 to $15 if you're paying retail. Um, but you have to buy so much of everything. You can probably get two out of everything. This checkered fabric, you know, you're going to want to buy at least a half a yard, maybe more. I mean, consider it. If it's on sale, get a full yard and then you can make three or four of them. So... Um, you know, just when you go to the store, consider that, um, what I give you is basically a guideline for one, but you're going to have extra because you can't just buy exactly what you need in fabric. You have to buy it by, you know, the yardage. So sometimes you have extra. So go ahead and grab a little bit extra of everything. So that way maybe you can make two or more. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoy her. I cannot wait to see what you all come up with and your visions and what you do. But uh, this is a fun one. It's a big one. Um, and I promise you, these little kits like this, these little sets, they, de they do sell well. They, they do sell. I have never had a problem selling um, my, I call mine a Mrs. Valentine. This is the Queen of Hearts. So um, people will be looking for them. All right. You guys have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.